Hello. Welcome to Going 19. Uh, today we are doing episode 50. Yay. Uh, and we are covering, we're starting Wizard and Glass, uh, reading part of uh, the prologue and part one. With me are Ed and Allie. Um, let's start the show. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Seemed a little uh, off. Yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> I thought it was, you know, whatever. <laughs> Right. Is that good enough? Or you want to do it again? I don't care. It's fine for me. I thought I forgot something and then I did it, and that's why I hesitated. So I was like, cool. I forget the episode, and then you like kind of threw it in the last second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I didn't so, say Dark Tower. I don't know if that matters. Probably, right? I don't fucking whatever. Okay. It matters if we say it matters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. So were you saying the prologue was different? No, I highlighted something that I noticed. There may have been like uh, one or two sentences in a, that were different. In but... a speaking ring, not far from the portal of the bear, time is mended, paradox is ended, and the real third is at last drawn. Jake re-enters midworld at the conclusion of a perilous rite. Mm. So he's calling Jake the third, the three, third of the three. I did notice that, which I thought was weird, but that's not what I was talking about. Well, wait, what were you talking about? Didn't you ask me what I was talking about? The actual prologue, the blame part, not the argument. Where am I at? Oh, I'm in argument. Well, I went to the first thing I highlighted. So, <laughs> oh, that the prologue is after that? Yeah. Um, but I did think of that, and I just kind of let it go. I was like, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't let it go. Right? Um <laughs> Yeah, that's he, all I have. That, no, that, was that all uh, the quote? You know, even the um, you see the songs or the quotes that they put in the front, and they don't really make sense until after you read it. The don't say they should put all them quotes at the end because I understand them, but I because I know what what's, what happens after we go to Magus. Anybody a, Ma a Mahis fan? Wait, have we mentioned Mages yet? Have they no. mentioned? No, and we have also not oh. mentioned his incorrect pronunciations. <laughs> what we did actually? Okay, then never mind. The town, you know. Well, I mean, you know how the first part ends. So Susan is in the town of Hambry in the barony of Mages. Yeah, I think if I have that right. Uh huh. So as much as Amber, we've talked. Uh, how I always say this isn't my favorite book for the basically same reasons that it is one of your favorite books. <laughs> um, so that being said, as much as I usually hate on this book, I'm fucking I'm super excited to go to Mages. I can't wait. Interesting. I already did. I cheated. Well, I wonder Although why the whole... you feel differently now. I guess because it's been a while. Because like yeah. now I got now I'm three books in with Roland, so like we're over strapped in, we're ready to go. And like, like I said, like the you know, everybody is there. Like, oh, we, as, yeah, as, we're in it now. Like we fought as a team more than once at this point. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it hasn't even gotten weird yet. Yeah, I mean there yeah. is so much we haven't even discovered all the. Um, the things that have moved magical on. aspects of Roland's world, maybe <laughs> yeah. all, all the things that are, you know, Stephen Kingy. Mm -hmm. Um, we've just kind of scratched the surface with. I mean, even I, almost I, I don't know supernatural. I don't know if that's the right word, but yeah, like I mean, like even all the stuff they went through with Lud and River Cross. Well, River Crossing was a little supernatural, not River it, Crossing. Tall. It's also uh, like it, there was sci-fi i mean now we've, we're crossing back and forth between like worlds <laughs> universes yeah this is the book where it starts getting really like what and i have to go back and say wait i gotta read that again what what oh my god yes that happens so many times and i'm like okay all right we're here and this is the time and that's what's happening <laughs> so i'm getting ahead of myself let's go back to blaine blaine is a pain ellie <laughs> what do you got <laughs> I that is the truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Right. 
I liked I liked how Boyden finished. I liked that Eddie came in clutch and rolling, <laughs> like despite you know trashing on him and his jokes, was finally like, okay, I can see like you had the answer to this. This was, you know, good job. <laughs> yeah, I like how his his. I don't know what you call it. His silliness uh, saved the day, and Roland had to eat shit because he didn't give him any respect for it. Even though he says you're gunslingers now, he's always like, "Yeah, there's still me, and then you guys." <laughs> so he's yeah. kind of getting that wall broken down and realizing they're just as capable as he is, and maybe in different ways um, yeah. than he I, is. I also really enjoyed the you know um, evolution of realizing like. It's very Stephen King like to have that repetition, but it's just he's giving you a little bit at a time and repeating it, and it's like drilled into your head, and you're like, "What?" You kind of get a feeling of what's going on, but you don't know yet because Eddie doesn't know yet. And then seeing his brother come back, but in like for once a somewhat positive version, because I guess I don't know that's how it works in their world. <laughs> I've uh, yeah, I've, that was a surprise, even though I knew. <laughs> Like I said, I've read these feeling. three. This is my fourth time, but you know, I forget most of it because <laughs> you know, it's just the way books are. So a lot of it's yeah. like, oh yeah, I was surprised when Henry was nice. I didn't remember that part. Yeah. Um, most of his good. his Henry memories are very toxic. I think the great yeah. sage and Eminent Junkie says everything you need to know about the relationship. <laughs> It was nice to see that he could be, like, brotherly, though, and support Eddie instead of just ragging on him the entire time. Well, yeah, but, but that's because it's a fake made-up version of him. <laughs> and he's right, though. They had it from the beginning. Like, he asked the... Shit. What was the one that Eddie said at first? And Blaine was like, I'm not even going to entertain that. And then I'm, And I'm sitting there going, don't ask him silly questions. He won't play silly games. Like, it finally clicked. I was uh -huh. like, oh my god, ask him a silly question. He doesn't like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the same time, though, I'm thinking, like, that was probably good to wait until the end, because if it literally destroyed Blaine and he went on just, Honestly. like, cruise, then they could have, you know, it was a 50-50 chance between either they'll cruise to a stop and they'll be okay, but be stranded somewhere, or they'll just keep speeding up because there's no way to, like, modulate the speed at yeah. that point. What happens to a monorail when it loses power? Does it, like, fall over or does it still, like, stay up in the... <laughs> no yeah. idea. Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to find out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good like... thing they weren't a thousand feet up in the air with the, with the uh, snake-like thing eating a three-foot beetle uh, out the side <laughs> of the mountain. I should just go, well, we're fucked. Yeah. We're uh, dying on the way to the tower, it seems like. So, um, yeah, I mean, that whole scene, I kind of didn't see, I was, you know, I waited a couple of years for that scene. Um, so at first I'm like, what? Uh, <laughs> but I like it. What um, do you mean? What were you disappointed by? Just that it was a stupid joke that saved because it was such a cliffhanger, and it's just like, oh my god, how are they going to get out of this? There's probably nothing he could have done that would have been satisfying at the time. Yeah, because I think what was it? Wizard and Glass was ninety seven, and uh, Wastelands was ninety one. So I had six years to wonder <laughs> how he was going to get out of that. I don't think he knew when he wrote it how he was going to get out. Of it. Well, I mean, maybe he did because he did mention Eddie kind of from the beginning, unless he went back and fixed that. I mean, considering his track record for endings not going well, <laughs> and um, the fact that like it couldn't, it, it wouldn't have been satisfying if there was like finally one riddle that just stumped him. Because it's like, why? Why wouldn't he know everything? That's the whole point. So I think this was a pretty good way to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the only ones he wouldn't know are the ones that aren't. You know, I, yeah. Is there is a joke a riddle? Does it? You know, I think the, he could have made an argument that it doesn't count as a riddle because there's no way to arrive at a logical answer. But, uh, you know, I was thinking that, too. But, but I think last time you were the one that said, yeah, jokes are riddles. And I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> I mean, well, and at least, yeah, the, the ones okay. Eddie started with were more like riddles because you could at least like while the answer is yes, silly. It's at least still logical because it's like a play on words or yeah, that's true. stuff like that. 
It's almost like um like those like brain teaser type things. Yeah. And when you start stapling dead babies to chickens, then then it gets a little harder to uh, <laughs> work yeah. out the lot logistics. He it's knew also- the answer though to the isn't that the one he knew the answer to? But it it was like so hurtful for him to answer it. He just kind of started blowing up, <laughs> which was funny. Like like it was so illogical the computer couldn't take it. I'm not sure that I quite understood that that's what happened. I thought it was that he didn't really know and that was what was bothering him. But I think what you're saying makes a lot more sense, actually. <laughs> well, there was two. The first one he answered. Yeah. And then, so Eddie asked him another one. And then he's like, I'm not. And then Roll, that, that's when Roland's like, uh, wait, 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 what? Right, Did you say right, you're right. not? <laughs> Are you crying off? That's a good point, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a, I wonder where he got, like, there's a lot of riddles in that section. I wonder where he, like, was he just a, where did the whole riddle thing come from? Because it, it, ever since we've met Roland, we've heard about riddling, I feel like. Yeah, and it seems awfully convenient that, I mean, not that it would have mattered anyway, but, like, Roland's like, yeah, I should know thousands of these, and I guess my brain is moving on now, too. And it's like, uh, what? Excuse me? <laughs> we need your brain. <laughs> yes, yeah, your brain is the only one that has the answers about the Dark Tower. Yeah. What a what a horrible realization that was. Like, wait, I'm moving on too. You're just, <laughs> you're just old, cause, like, you know, I know, I, I pick any category that you know, a hundred things of, and you won't be able to name more than ten, cause you start, cause you just can't hold yeah. it all. So, just cause you knew a thousand riddles a thousand years ago, I would be impressed if he pulled that from memory. Like, also, like you, when you're in a life or death situation, like you. It, it's hard to, you know, come up with those answers. <laughs> yeah, like being a court jester, like, make me laugh or die. I'm like, oh, okay, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Think, the, yeah. Well, actually, what I was going to say is uh, I noted that Blaine, one thing he said, he's like, the rest of your riddles better be better, or I'll be sorry you saved your lives. And I'm like, okay. So, I mean, we we knew that, but, like, at least he confirmed that that's the only reason why he's helping them, is just to entertain him. <laughs> yeah. Because he's bored, I guess. Oh, yeah. And he yeah. saves, he heals Jake's hand, too, which I'm like, this is such a, like, abusive relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's one, yeah well, well i don't think it's a i don't know if i'd call it a relationship more of a kidnapping <laughs> true well, maybe so. some uh munchausen's or something well they reverse went on, they for him though <laughs> what well yeah but they didn't know that I, maybe they knew but they they knew they had no choice because blame yeah. is a pain and that is the truth yeah. yeah, I love the way he does i love the way he just recites it till it's in your brain and you think you know what he's talking about but then when it came down to it, I, I had I didn't. I was off. It wasn't at all what I thought it was going to be. It also becomes like a mantra. Like, it's like a, I, I mean, I, we've been saying it. I've been saying it since I finished the series, like, three years ago. All of the things. Like, Ka is a wheel. and All Lane's things serve beam. the beam. I, all things serve the beam, yeah. <laughs> things are going yeah. 19. <laughs> uh, I see. <laughs> You're gonna, you got like two more books, and this whole name of this podcast will make sense. I don't know. <laughs> um, um, also, another thing I noticed so they said that, like, when Blaine passed through because of the how fast he was going and the sonic boom, it like to- it killed the animals that were in the area, I think, or whatever. Yes. Yeah, is the sonic boom stronger if you're going faster? I don't think that's how it works. But I'm, I'm also sure. like, this. Didn't he move that fast before? How did people not get obliterated every time? I don't understand. Well, that's... Yeah, I was wondering that, too. Like, every time he came into... Maybe that's why they had the wall around the... Uh, whatever the hell that... Blood. Blood, yeah. Mm-hmm, maybe. Deflecting, the, deflecting Blaine Sonic Boom. Uh, I don't think Concrete's very good at deflecting Sonic Booms. <laughs> I think it makes it kind of crumbly. <laughs> I like how... Uh, Eddie's like... For once, I agree with you, Blaine, old buddy. He's like, I'm not your buddy, idiot of New York. He's like, I'll kiss my ass and go to heaven. Blaine's like, there is no heaven. I'm like, oh, <laughs> really? I'd like to have a conversation with Blaine about that one. I mean, he's a computer. Like, I, well, I guess I don't know what he is, honestly. 
<laughs> yeah. Did, you know, I would have liked to seen him, him again at some point. I really enjoyed yeah. Blaine. Yeah, he's a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, popcorn stuck in my throat. Um, he's very snarky and very confident. He was absolutely sure that he knew how this was going to end. There was no doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like how they like, said you're you're going to riddle. I'm going to answer, and it's going to be over. Eddie, get the fuck out of here because those aren't riddles, and I won't play silly games. Like, like no. the, the whole thing that you should have played silly games. Like I never got till you know. I guess it was time to do it. Like that's why he won't play silly games because it'll fucking kill him. Like, damn it, I never thought of that. <laughs> but he's not gonna tell you anything. No, well, I just meant like all the clues were there and they were repeated over and over again, and I still kind of didn't quite get it what he yeah, was telling no. me until it was that in front of my face. I agree. There's a lot of symbolism. There. I thought it was just like a, you know. I, I don't know. It better be a good joke because he doesn't like bad ones. I didn't realize it was a. That's what. You, that's your strategy, right there. Got it in writing. Wherever the hell, Beryl Evans is from. Yeah, wasn't that that was in Choo Choo? I thought that or in Chart. I thought that was from the essay. Or is it both? I think it's both. Oh. The silly games don't. I think that's from Charlie. It's definitely Charlie the Choo Choo. Okay. It may have been in Jake's essay. I honestly don't remember. But um, you know. don't ask him silly questions. He won't. That might have been in there. Ah, who cares? It came from somewhere. Uh, but it, it was right. It's like right there in front of you. But I'm. I was still misinterpreting it. I did. It, it literally in writing. So I like it. Didn't they? Wait, was this that this part where they? Oh, you're passed... right. that's, that's the song he sings. I forgot. Okay, sorry. Where they passed Charlie? Uh, like I think I knew where Beryl. Was that this part? Oh yeah, I think I know where <laughs> Beryl Evans got this from. Once they get to Topeka, yeah, they see Charlie. Jake basically faints. He like sits on the ground. He's like, "Oh Jesus Christ," or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of just like cop a squat on top of Blaine. Like I think I would get. First of all, as far away from that thing as I could, and then sit there. Yeah, they took a little yeah. too long to like be like, we should get out of here. I'm like, you think? <laughs> They're like reminiscing and talking and like, oh, look, that's your sky, not my sky. And, oh, hey, let's camp here for the night. Like, well, let's get off the train. Like, oh, well, oh, yeah, I guess we should do that. <laughs> uh, no, I don't trust that. I don't even trust that that thing's dead. So at any minute, it could decide. Uh, exactly. Or, the, you know, if, if it was broadcasting from blood, what's the. I don't know. Is there any more trains? I'm sure I could head something else their way. <laughs> or like hop into a, you know, different computer somewhere else. Lawnmower man style. Right. Uh, uh, uh. Um, boy, it was kind of my favorite again in this part because he kept trying to do the stuff there. And they showed him trying to shrug and he was like, Rolling his shoulders um, back and <laughs> forth because he couldn't quite figure it out. Yes, so cute. Yeah, there was something I, else I think too. He's gonna be my favorite character. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's in it enough to say he's my favorite, but he's. I don't have a bumper sticker on anybody else. That's for sure. <laughs> Although I I didn't choose that one. But... Not exactly arguing with it. But. <laughs> um, Roland says, uh, "Does does he have blind spots?" Eddie asked. Well, if he doesn't, we're gonna die on this train. Eddie's like, oh, "I like the way you kind of ease us over the rough spots." It's <laughs> 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 Roland, the therapist, right there. And I think this might be the first long, tall, and ugly. I can't remember if there was one before that. Oh, uh, in this section. I don't know either, yeah. I know I called him that, but I'm not sure if Eddie did that. So that, that, be, that definitely becomes a thing. <laughs> I keep forgetting to, like, look for the first of those things because they happen so much after they start appearing that I'm like, oh, wait, we haven't seen that yet. <laughs> yeah, I like how the computer thinks it's male. What, based on what? Exactly? That's what I was thinking, too. <laughs> because your voice is... Maleish as opposed to femaleish. Well, I mean, what else could you even 
I mean, technically, Blaine is also a unisex name. No, wait. Maybe Blaine. Blair, I guess, is what I was thinking of. But it could be. Well, Patricia could be. Could be Pat, right? True, yeah. Blaine, uh, yeah, Blaine, I mean, I don't know. You could go. Especially it's because, male to me, but mostly because of this, I think. He's pink, which doesn't matter, but, you know, you would think, if anything. <laughs> I mean, maybe they were having a gender revolution in Lud before the shit hit the fan. <laughs> so they made the men pink and the women blue. Maybe they just like to really confuse people at baby showers. <clears throat> or uh, gender reveals. Yeah, it was... Um... I'm looking at the parts again where he's getting, like, Eddie's trying to figure it out. And he's like, why do I keep getting this memory? And, like, I knew what was coming because I remembered how he saves them. But it's still such an interesting, like, they're like, what is happening? You're like, Eddie doesn't know and we don't know. And we just want to He spent so long on remembering this to remember that, to remember this, to open the door, to get, like, just fucking remember it already. My God. <laughs> I, like, I didn't hear... Him. Yeah. And they can't roll and hypnotize you. <laughs> or did it? Yeah, get that thing. Get the coin on your fingers. Has he done that yet? Or no, the bullet, not the coin. Roll the bullet through your they, fingers. They did that recently because I remember Jake said he looked away, but I can't remember what that was. That it was the when waist. they were. Um, Susanna was reaching back in her memory to get the prime. Oh, weapon. you're right. You're right. The four special and. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't even know. Is that a real word? Like, is that really how they talk to the four special? <laughs> <laughs> all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Blaine together again. Um, <laughs> did you notice how that was capitalized? Um, the king's horses and the is king normally capitalized in that situation, or is, that, is maybe that's a Stephen King? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Is it, like if you say king or queen, is that normally capitalized? I don't think so. I think um, I don't know. Depends. Unless on you're it. addressing one specifically, like King Lear or whatever. Right. But if that phrase is referring to a specific king, then it could be in theory. Yeah. Uh, you know how that guy feels about his name. <laughs> oh, we're gonna find also out. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, well, some of us do. I mean, never mind. Just gotta stop doing that. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's I don't have much else on Blaine as long as I waited for that, it's kind of over in a flash. You're like, oh, well, it, but I have to say, it was intense. Like, I, I, I felt maybe because I was at the gym and I was like working out when I was doing it, so I but I kind of like felt like I was riding along with them. Um, oh, yeah. You know, the speed, and, and then when, what was he doing? He was opaquing and solidifying the coach yeah. randomly. Yeah. Losing power. And he's, oh, yeah. And then he's like, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. We got to stop and recharge 8,000 miles away at the <laughs> electric waterfall, I guess is what that was. Um, With the, the dogs, the hounds of hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, eyes yeah. were like shooting from under the waterfall. The electricity out of us. Okay, like that. I think it was Jake who was like, uh, or somebody was just like, "Who built that?" <laughs> Maybe yeah. That was like... <laughs> oh yeah, because they were like five hundred feet halfway up the mountain, and he's like, "How did they even get up there?" Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I think I don't remember who again, but was like, "Let's not t ask questions now." <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that doesn't really. I guess if and... you fall, you call it car. Also, okay. So if they're in Topeka, does that mean that this is Blaine's? That was his route the whole time, like to go in between worlds, or is that just something that happens every now and then? <laughs> I think that's part of the uh, uh, ties that bind our loosening. I don't think he was supposed. To... You know, I can't, I don't know how to answer that because it's on his damn route map. Right. That's what I don't understand. But like, maybe. Well, I mean, he was clearly insane. So maybe he like found a way to hop between worlds and change his route map over the last 800 years while he was hanging out. Well, I was also thinking up. like there could be a Topeka in both worlds, like for some reason. <laughs> maybe somebody who. Because <laughs> like, the one they're in 
wait, wait a minute. Or in all worlds, because we are dealing with three now. <laughs> Where did we leave off? I have to remember. So we know about Takoro spirits? Yet? Yes. Okay, so the Topeka they went to was not our to or their Topeka. Right. Uh, so it may have been there the whole time. It's just a slightly different Captain Tripsy Topeka. Also, it's before we get into not the one that happened in the original Captain Trips book. Right. <laughs> That's why I say now we're dealing with three worlds or four or whatever. But um... at least three, if not more. <laughs> Well, all the, Allie, I don't know if you probably, I don't know how much you know, but all the Captain Trips plague death stuff is the stand. It's straight out of that book. So they they, they walked out of the the station at Topeka and into the stand. No. Nope. Yeah. But not yeah. in, not our version of the stand, I guess. Yes, because we don't have Takura Spirits and Nazla, I think was mentioned, maybe. Boing Boing Burgers. <laughs> yeah, I didn't remember that one. What was the other one? The Kansas City Monarchs? Yeah. Um, so none of them are in our world. So this... Something... Uh, is a different... So that's kind of terrifying. So that's a different world where the end of the world also happened. <laughs> Something that somebody also brought up that I hadn't considered at all was that Jake, Susanna, and Eddie may not necessarily all be from the same world either. And I'm like, we just assume yeah. they are, but we don't know. I, I, once they were like, oh, no, this this didn't happen. Like, I left my world after this. This didn't happen in my world. I was like, so how do we know that Jake, Eddie, and Susanna are even from the same where? Right. We know Jake and Eddie are. We don't know about Susanna because Eddie oh, saw that's Jake. Right. They knew each other. Jake knew. saw Eddie or both when oh, he was little. True. Yeah. True. Well, maybe it was a different Eddie. See, it's getting complicated now. But Eddie yeah. says he remembers it. and That's true. Yeah. Eddie says he remembers it. And then because you have Jack Mort, who was oh. supposed to call Jake, who had also made. That's a good point. Susanna, two different people, and then caused her to lose her legs. I guess it is the same where. Oh, yeah, they, wow. they kind of have to be. Now we just verified that. Huh? Look at us yeah. fact checking. <laughs> we could work for Stephen King. There was a guy that used to, I can't remember his name. He used to write him letters and tell him all the shit he got wrong in his books, like as far as Wasn't because this book said this and this book said that. He actually hired him and said, here, just do it, you know, professionally. I thought that was what I thought that was the guy who wrote the concordance, Robin Firth. Rob Robin's a uh, another ambiguous name. Robin Firth is a girl. Oh, well, I meant guy as person, but yeah. <laughs> um, no, I don't think that was her. I think it was somebody else, um, but I I'm not sure. So you know, I'm kind of speaking from ten year old memories of rumors. <laughs> <laughs> I have to remember that there might be somebody going, hey. Uh, <laughs> I like, was it the comedian that was talking about sitting in a room with the, like nerds? You sit there and say how different it is from the book. Oh, no, it was uh, John Crook, a baseball announcer we listened to. He said something on the broadcast, and then people were tweeting him, uh, telling him everything, why everything he said was wrong. And he was just like, I bet those people are fun to hang out with the parties, huh? <laughs> like, yeah, well, yeah, I don't think they go to too many parties. But... No, you don't, don't be that guy. Yeah. Um, I did, though, um, reading, you know, everyone catching the super flu and stuff in that world. I was like, so COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was See, definitely King predicted the future, kind of. That was the comparison that was made when it all started. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, they were. Remember, they were asking him, like, "Hey, so you did you predict this?" He's like, "No, no, no. In my book, everyone died. Remember?" Yeah, like one percent <laughs> of the population survives. <laughs> yeah. No, he's like, "Go, go see Dean Koontz. He said something about Wuhan one time in a book. It's like thirty years ago." <laughs> Do you guys know about that conspiracy theory? No. The Dean. Koontz he predicted one? it. Dean Koontz, uh, I can't remember the book, maybe Watchers. Uh, st the book starts with a virus that escapes from a lab in Wuhan, China, and destroys the world. 
<laughs> and it was written like 30 years ago. So when COVID happened, they're like, hey, he knew about this a long time ago. I mean, that does seem like a huge coincidence. I believe it, but like, it's also like I get why people believe it's a not. I mean, I do kind of want to talk to Dean and know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> like, is Wuhan just like known? Is that like the place where the viruses are? <laughs> is that where they do like virus experimenting? So it wasn't a reach to say, you know, like Silicon Valley, if a computer virus escaped to Silicon Valley, maybe nobody would be surprised. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a mixed metaphor that's not quite right but you know what i mean if there's only a certain yeah. number of like testing centers in the world and you pick one of them like <laughs> right i mean if you just say anywhere in china i think you're probably safe probably shouldn't say that um <laughs> are we um, 39 minutes so i can remember that <laughs> I like how um, they noticed that, like, they're always listening for something horrible. Like, first it was the lobstrosities, then it was the god drums, and now it's the thinny. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Which, I haven't gotten to that yet. Go ahead, sorry. Well, no, they, so they were saying, like, how it kind of sounds like a guy playing a saw, and I... I get that that's not the most pleasing sound in the world, but I don't think it's that bad not solid like shaking it making yeah. it warble it's more than a sound it's like a vibration you uh, know if you take a saw you know how you take a pencil and you move your hand really fast to try to make it look like it's bending up and down yeah now imagine doing that with a saw and the sound that would make when it did that mm. that what that, 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 that like i yeah. can't <laughs> that's what it sounds like the city uh confuses me yeah, me too. Okay, well, I didn't. Know uh, yeah, I think you're confused for the. the, the don't say anything yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have they. Did they go through the thinny? Did I read that right? Yes, they walked. But then there's still a thinny that they're camping in front of that they haven't gotten to yet. Is is that right? Um, it just. Kind or are of they going like away? The closer they get to the castle thing. They're acting like it's all around them and they're just walking through it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're confused well, and for the same reason I am. It yeah. has like pockets in it. So like sometimes they're walking through it, sometimes they're not. Right. Like it sounds like I'll just Swiss say TV. that by the end of this book, the thinny the thinny is projected as a very different kind of thing. So we need to revisit that if we can remember. I suppose, yeah, it may have been different in the past, so we're about to find out. <laughs> it's not something that I would have enter even thought Roland would have entertained the possibility of walking into. That is exactly my confusion. I was like, they're gonna <laughs> what now? Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, which leads to many, many other questions that I can't ask yet. So. Right. Um, well, it seems like Roland is very much not himself right now, though. <laughs> no, he's kind of remembering the worst thing that he thinks ever happened to him, even though there's been many bad things. Uh, and he doesn't, he's trying to figure out how to say it. Uh, I don't think he's ever actually told anybody about this. Right. So, in um, that case, like, he's maybe, I mean, it seems like ever since they deboarded Blaine, he's like been in his own world and you know is only minutely aware of what's going on. So, so based on what like once we finish the book, it's not it's not something that like he would be caught unaware by. Like as soon as he, he I would have thought as soon as he sees the thinny, you do everything you can to avoid it, no matter what's on your mind. <laughs> So it's interesting. We're gonna, I guess we'll have, like you said, we'll find out. <laughs> the city seems very weapon like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll just leave it at just stop talking about the city. Um, <laughs> I also, we get the first mention of the Crimson King, I think. <laughs> I did. I think I highlighted that. I was wondering if that was the act, was that the actual first reference? I think it may have been alluded to in one of the other books, but it wasn't, like, outright stated. Yeah, more of a third-person kind of thing. 
Um, oh, and and by the way, I love the name of the city. It's kind of perfectly. Every time I hear it, it every, every time I see that name, I perfectly picture and hear like what I think it is. Mm -hmm. So I it's, agree. I can just hear the warbling saw and like like the air shimmering in front of me, kind of thing. Well, that, Jake, Jake had it right too. It's like it says being in the thinny is like finally reaching the shining uh, water mirage you could often see far up on the highway on hot days. Yeah, yeah, but then that's not the point. I just mean what it looks he, like. You <laughs> you would reach that eventually, and it would just be you know your regular old oasis in the desert, right? But that's why it's a a metaphor, or I guess technically a simile. But <laughs> it would be like it always looked like that. Distant mirage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure I said that. Um, <laughs> also, real quick, um, it, I thought it was interesting. It notated or it said that the super flu, um, Captain Chips, is a, an effect of the dark tower um, because everything is being hurt, like in the fabric of existence is waning. And I'm like, oh, I never considered that. But of course, everything leads to the tower. So it's like the stand is. Uh, well, yeah, obviously before the tower is saved. That's interesting. If Wait. It is saved. <laughs> Just I mean, everything would have to be before the... Wait. Just what do you mean? That Why? Captain Tripp... If the tower was saved, the sand wouldn't happen, right? It would have to be before to be... To have a world where... It's not... Yes, but also... Like, I don't really necessarily think of these stories as chronologically. So it's just interesting that it's like, this is a, I mean, I know this isn't our story, but I read basically the, the you know, um, super flu Very story. similar one, yeah. Right. And so it's just another connection or it's like, that is a consequence of the tower dying. <laughs> he definitely starts retrofitting. <laughs> I like it. The stand gets a big overhaul. Um, we should probably read that when we're done. And then we have to read Insomnia also when we're done. Yeah. Um, those Honestly. two, I think, are re required at this point. Yeah, I agree. I think reading Insomnia after the tower is going to actually be cooler because, well, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you're going to know more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just it's a double edged sword. Do you want to know? Do you not want to know? Um, as much fun as I have, like dreading and anticipating what I know is coming, it's also fun to be blindsided. Go, whoa! <laughs> well, I feel it's... like I. Sorry. Yeah. I was just gonna say it's uh, it's like you said, it's all about the journey, not the destination. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's Stephen King, right? He knows, he knows how to take travel, but he doesn't know how to stop traveling. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> you could say, a, you know, the stands a lot like that. Uh, but we're not, we're not going to talk about endings. Bill Denbro has the same problem. <laughs> the guy, the guy in the store didn't even want his book, or didn't want him to sign it for that reason. <laughs> Um, Blaine says he cares not about the Manny. That was funny. They were always foolish. Um, I can't, I guess, well, we're not there yet, so I can't comment too much on that. I like the Manny. The what? A little too, the Manny. Oh, yeah. J uh, what's his name? Um, Roland says that court knew of other worlds is something I long suspected. Yeah. Um, because he, he says, I think he may have held palaver with the Manny who lived outside the city. And Blaine's like, I care not about the Manny rolling up Gilead. Like, like, I think there might be something there. He, he, whenever Blaine's dismissive, I'm suspicious at this point. <laughs> uh, okay, so, who are the Manny and what do we need to find out? But yeah, I mean, you know, I don't think it's a spoiler. You never do see Blaine again, but it's kind of like. I'm, I'm sad when a good villain goes away forever. He was, he was a little smug, but he was very uh, uh, entertaining, I guess is the way to say it. Well, I mean, he's he's a fun villain because he's really just like a child. I mean, he's, again, a homicidal, suicidal child, but 
it's the I mean, emotions are not all bad. It's just like like sometimes he wanted to help them. He wanted them to be your friend. And then sometimes he just wanted them to entertain them. And then sometimes he just got angry. Like, you know, it's it makes yeah. it a lot more terrifying to deal with, but we're the readers, so it's just fun to read. <laughs> yeah. So so the computer that controls the entire town of Lud and the surrounding areas is like a five year old brat that went insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> And I mean, well, it didn't really sounds bad when you put it that way. They were killing but, themselves anyway. <laughs> but based on what he decided they wanted from him, he was the one that was controlling the drums and got All them into the. All he was doing was letting the the Greys use the drums, like play them. Like I don't know if he even told them. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he gave them the specific orders to do that, but I guess he cultivated the environment where maybe they would want to do that because they're right. horrible people apparently anyway. <laughs> it's like he didn't have to try too hard. No. Um, <laughs> but you know when when the world doesn't make sense you turn to the mystical, right? It's like I don't know where like sacrificing people they thought was a good idea. It's not a god I want to hang out with, I gotta tell you. Yeah. I mean I'm I'm not the only thing I can think is that, like, what if if you are trying to to show something that you uh, are in its servitude, like, what would be the ultimate sacrifice? Is like sacrificing one of your own, like, you know, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of get how you would get to that point, and that's why we've moved away from it. <laughs> right? Yeah, all the religions do it. No, we got a whole not we Christians have a whole holiday about that. <laughs> Um, they have a couple actually. The one where he killed him, the one where he comes back. <laughs> um, I was about, yeah, just Blaine is. I was about to say something, I forgot what it was. So, um, I like how eight hours became about 30 minutes at, at most. <laughs> he was like, oh, yeah, time's different. Did I forget to mention that? But he's yeah. also, yeah, like, we don't know if he lied about the distance or how. It's probably both. <laughs> I think maybe the last time he did the run, it was probably what it was. But, you know, things change. Time's loose in Roland's world. Well, he's uh, not having to make any other stops, so. Yeah, they definitely spent a lot of time with Eddie just and his Henry memory. I think it's on like 20 pages of that nonsense. Oh, I, I shouldn't call I was entertained, I have to say. But It's just, there are sometimes, like this, again, I knew that he was just trying to remember that he needed to say like silly jokes. So I'm like, can we just get there already? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what, at first, I'm like, okay, like what, how does this, you know, round about our way back to, uh, you know, asking about the chicken crossing the road, goddammit. Um, and it had something, I don't even remember how he got there. It had something to do with Jake moving the flint in closer to. So that was the, when, it was when Jake, or Roland was teaching Jake how to start a fire that they had the conversation about riddles to begin with. That's what he was trying to remember. And then what was it, it was that he needed to remember? To, it was connected to Henry because Roland made fun of, well, he didn't make fun of him, but he hurt him in a way that Henry did and he didn't even realize it. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, I was I with him. I was like, kind of fuck you. Like, roll it. What? Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just like, I didn't ever connect why Henry was part of that, like, thinking his way back to what he needed to do to beat Blaine. Like, why, I was like, why is Henry even coming back into this? Like, <laughs> yeah, it didn't make sense. And I think that's why it was a reformed version of him, because it was like, hey, remember what I used to do to you? Well, now I'm here to help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Eddie just needs someone to lead him, even if it's coming out of his own head, like in the directions he needs to go. It's always some kind of, wasn't the key the same thing? He had to come a memory to get the whittling right or something. Yeah. Um well, yeah. I mean he was remembering, I think, the the monster the Dutch Hill thing. Maybe, yeah. Oh yeah, that's what he remembered. But yeah, he see he needs he's a very visual uh learner, I guess you would say. 
he's the picture of the entire memory. I also think it's just hilarious that like like Roland knows what's going on, but Susanna is just like, what is he doing? Can he help us already? Like, can he get that look off his face? <laughs> Yeah, they're about to die, and she's like, well, uh, I mean, I guess he's cool. Like, I would be like, hey, man, snap the fuck out of it. <laughs> if you got something, you know, we got three minutes to live, so if you got something, it's now or never. Yeah. What is it? You need to tell it a stupid joke? Well, then go fucking do it. <laughs> stop, stop obsessing. Tell Henry to fuck off. Um, I, I, quite, I don't blame her, though. Like, if I was, you know, terrified and the person that I love is just sitting there zoned out, I would be like, Hey. <laughs> yeah. I would probably think yeah, they're in shock. I'm like, come back. Come back. I need you now. Yeah, that's what she didn't do. She didn't go, like, snap her fingers in front of his face or anything. Well, she, so I'm about I, to die and my, you know, wife is just sitting there out and out of space. I'm, I'm at least fucking stopped her sitting on her. doing anything. She was going to. <laughs> oh, okay. Oops. Never mind. <laughs> uh, what is the greatest riddle of the Orient? Many men smoke it, but Fu Manchu. <laughs> it's so... I don't know if you could write that way anymore. Um, <laughs> I, I'm i not going to lie. It took me a second to get that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I said it out loud, and I got it. Yeah. I, like, oh, I get it. It's a tobacco reference. Why did the woman name her son Seven and a Half? Because he drew his name out of a hat. <laughs> Never heard. Of it. There was some. I like Eddie's were my favorite riddles. I gotta tell you, they were kind of funny. Um. Okay, I'm trying to get to the end of Eddie's part. Yeah, I thought I, we were past blame, but I wasn't gonna say anything. We kind of jumped back and forth from the beginning, but we did get um, an, uh, a clarification of the the lion riddle, though, which was good. I know that's far. Back. It still is. I don't know. It doesn't really. No, it's not like it, it's not like an answer. It's more of an idea. Like this is that and that thing, this. It's the same thing as Eddie's jokes. Just didn't make sense. <laughs> okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> um. Oh, by the way, we we have a Martin Walter uh, clarification. Did you catch that? Not quite. Neither Eldred Jonas nor the crone on the hill had been of Martin's stature, nor even of Walter's. Wait, am I in the right spot? I didn't go too far, did I? No. I don't know. Who uh, what? What? Where is that? It's before they hit the city. Um, um, okay, so Roland, this is the first time Roland see he for whatever reason, remembers Robert Browning's poem. My first thought was he lied in every word. And Roland's like, what What words is that? Whose poem? And then he starts remembering shit. It's page 75, but I don't know if that's right on your... That, no, that's not right on yours. Mm. Well, it might be. I'm on, But I'm on the tablet, so I'm not sure what page that is. Uh, hold on. Are, are you in chapter 4? Or 3? Yeah, I'm after Topeka. Okay. Um, uh, anyway, it says Roland's remembering. Let's see, 75. Okay, it's before 75. Wait, might have it. Um, all right, whatever, I can't find it. Uh, neither he's he remembers Susan. He remembers the old crone. Um, the, he didn't know whose poem. He goes, "What words? Whose poem did I just remember?" He says he didn't know, but he knew that women could lie too. Women who hopped and grinned and saw too much from the corners of their roomy old eyes. So, I mean, we know who that is. Yeah. It didn't matter who had written the lines of Posey. The words were true words, and that was all that mattered. Neither Eldred Jonas nor the crone on the hill had been of Martin's stature, nor even of Walter's when it came to evil, but they had been evil enough. Oh, oh, I do remember reading that now, yeah. So. But that's good. But wasn't it the last book that he said they were the same? Yep. <laughs> now he says they're two different people again. <laughs> so, what the fuck, man? <laughs> 
Uh, I say I'm done trying to figure it out, but I can't help but obsess on it when uh, he keeps doing shit like that. It is. I think he just forgets, honestly. Right, that's why he has to hire people to remind him what he's writing. <laughs> um, a thinny is a place where the fabric of existence is almost entirely worn away. There are more since the force of the dark tower began to fall. Um, yeah, you wouldn't want to just accidentally walk into one of those things. So, then he, then are, they, really good. are they crossing worlds when they go through it? Is that what's going on? Like, are they still in Blaine's world, which I'm not even sure what to call that. I mean, they see the the no, because don't they realize the beam is gone like right away? Unless uh, they, I think yeah. Susanna said, mentions that, yeah. Unless the thinny is like also, you know, I mean, I, it, it's possible, I guess, that it has it had already transported them if they like went through it in Blaine. I like how uh, he says the Lovstrosities ask their lawyerly questions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, How are those lawyerly questions. I don't know. Down in town? Did it cheat? I, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I, I not they're sure what he means. Maybe because they're just like monotonous and one after the other. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Maybe he was not a fan of lawyers at the time. <laughs> like Steven Spielberg is. Uh, Lawyer's name is Bruce, so that's why the shark is the mechanical shark in Jaws is named Bruce because it's named after his lawyer. Uh, I like the lobstrosities; they're fun too. Yeah. I don't think I'd ever eat lobster again. And all the shit Roland's been through, he's horrified by because he ate lobster. Well, I guess that you know it might have had his hand in his uh, stomach, <laughs> so I guess that would be a. <laughs> A little off-putting. Like Susanna is like, we'll talk. She said at last, we'll palaver if you like that better. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> All right, tell me how you really feel. Also, um, we have our mention of um, like Midworld and Endworld, which I kind of forget sometimes. I just call all of Roland's world Midworld. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I forget. Yeah, what's before Midworld? Is there a start world, beginning world? <laughs> Like you are here, world. Right. And we did have our first mention of, I think Roland thinking about Susanna being pregnant. Yeah. Which I think is kind of important. Um, yeah. He did frowning down, hoping with all his heart that his first idea, the one that had come to mind as soon as he saw that restlessly rubbing hand, was wrong, because she had I mean, been in the speaking ring, and the demon that den there had its way with her while Jake was crossing between worlds. I yeah, I didn't realize that that could have been a thing. <laughs> That's uh, a terrifying thing. So she could be having like an omen baby. Ugh. Yeah. Um. But didn't she have those feelings before she had dealt with the demon? I don't think so. I don't remember. I don't remember. Either. I think it was close. It was right around this. Actually, I, I would have to say it was right before, or right after the, the Jake came through as she started. I don't think she was having. I don't Because uh, yeah. it's only been mentioned like twice and like once in the last two podcasts. So I think it was after he had already. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm sure Eddie's going to want to hear that. Huh. Uh, <laughs> because he was the one that was, that was... Remember I was saying he was like weirdly okay with what was happening? He didn't seem that concerned because he had to like get his key just right. Yeah. Uh, Does he even know what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's... he did at one point, but he couldn't care about it. Yeah, it's never really come up as something that he had to, like, they had to talk about or, you know, <laughs> go to marriage counseling for or anything. <laughs> He's like, so, you were screwing a demon the other day. Do you want to talk about that? 
<laughs> you said, like, you want to trade right. places? <laughs> right. You weren't just thrust in the air like I thought you were. <laughs> That's got to be a weird visual, right? Her, like, I don't know, basically, you know, no legs, fucking an invisible guy. So she's, like, up on her hands, I guess. <laughs> uh, the other... The station did belong to Eddie, Jakes, and Susanna's world, but can that perhaps not to their where? So, what does that mean? They're in the wrong part of the world? Is it somewhere else on the planet? Well, I think the way I interpreted that is that um, it's the same, <laughs> yeah, like the same planet, but not the same. Like they're in Africa uh, instead of Europe. <laughs> Isn't that what where means? Well, more like in the Marvel universe, like Earth One and Earth Two. Right. Yeah. Like, well, that's that's what I think he's trying to say, but I'm not sure where is the right concept. If anything, I would have uh, said when. Like that makes more sense, but I don't think. Yes. That but when's does, not quite right either, because it's yeah, not a time thing necessarily. Exactly, it's not chronological. It's just it, uh, a what to make a new word. <laughs> What'd you say, Ali? What dimension? Right. Yeah. Right. Maybe that's what we call dementia. Yeah, dimension. <laughs> not where dementia you're with all my what? dimensions. Wait, sorry. What? Yeah. Oh, just saying, like not where or when, but what. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's a good way to put it. Brolin's stupid and laggard mind insisted on thinking of as a stage rest. He really gives himself no credit. <laughs> I don't think Roland's mind is stupid or laggard. Far from it. Well, I also feel like he contradicts himself. Like, Stephen King contradicts Roland's character because then there are other moments where it's like, Oh, look at how smart he is. Or maybe that's what you're saying, is that he's doubting himself, but he's actually smart. <laughs> yeah. I kind of walked up to Suzanne and just took the fucking gun out of her holster without her even realizing it. <laughs> she was absorbed in... Oh, she was trying to find something out of the... Her, a key or... Wait, what was he looking for? She's trying to find something in her purse. Oh, to get the... Um, she's looking for a quarter to get the newspaper box open. Mm. Uh, so and she was like knee deep in purse, so to speak. And uh, he walks up and like takes the gun and just shoots it in the air or shoots the uh, newspaper box. Yeah, scares the shit out of her. And he's like, "Yeah, next time you better pay more attention." <laughs> um, and then Oi, you know, after he shoots the gun, Oi like runs halfway down the platform and looks back at him mistrustfully. I love that. <laughs> like just like any cat or dog would do. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, and then we get into the stand. It's very standy there for a couple pages. Um. Kind of nostalgic. Do you know anything about the stand? <laughs> Did you watch the show? No. Yeah. It's there is an episode of. Do you guys watch uh, Amber? Do you watch um, the Great North? Is that the animated one? Yeah, it's the one with. It's got Will Forte and uh, what's his name from Parks and Rec. Yeah, Nick um, Nick Offerman. Yeah, I do, I've seen there's, a few episodes, but I know what you're talking about. There's a whole last week's episode. They, there was a new movie coming out that they wanted to see, but they couldn't go see it because it was based on a book and they hadn't read the book yet. <laughs> so they were doing a marathon session, like sitting around reading the book all day Thursday so they could go see the movie on Friday. And none of them could get through the book because it was awful. Uh, <laughs> but I was, like, I was like, you know, whoever wrote that episode is dear to my heart because that's, you know, that's the rule. You can't, you can't see the movie if you haven't read the book. Otherwise, how would you know what to complain about? I think your life would be so much happier if you didn't see read the book first. <laughs> you know, and what it maybe that would be a better way to do it. It would make the, the book that much even better. 
Yeah, I can, then I could actually go, okay, that wasn't a bad movie. <laughs> but I mean, if it's Stephen King, there's no chance I'm gonna like yeah. not read the book first. The um, um, there's a reference like Susanna looks out and sees that like cars and stuff have been moved off the road, and she's like, "Oh, that's that's nice. At least people survived." Is that what I think it could be from the stand, like the the kid? No, I was thinking the 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 not so nice just, people that are roaming around looking for survivors. Um Don't you mean Stu's and Franny's scene? I I don't remember who it is, but not no wait, not yeah. Um I don't think it's Stu and Franny. I don't know how to get into it. Oh maybe it is. But just that remember the, the they use the trap that the their car yeah. Yes, they block. Where the guys road. try to kidnap them and, and right. shit. Is that what that's talking about? I'm not sure. Okay. I don't know. I imagine there was more than one place in the world where they used a bulldozer to get cars out of the way. Yeah, it's just that's what it reminded me of because that was the same way that it was set up when they came across it on the road. I don't think we have enough information. Possibly. <laughs> I mean, it's very everything's very standy in that section, so yeah, it it very well could be. Uh, I don't. I was thinking more of a box truck than a bulldozer, but I can't say I remember specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, but she's right though. At least everyone didn't die. I don't. I don't know how many. Yeah, a lot they... of people died, but uh, somebody cleared them, or maybe they just hadn't died yet. You ever think of that? I think I think she's right. Well, I mean, obviously I know she's right, but more than that, it's just that not all people who survive want have good intentions for the other survivors. <laughs> yeah. No, it's kind of a free for all at that point. <laughs> we we uh, nature is not a peaceful one all quite often. <laughs> Checks and balances that keep us peaceful. Um, I like the random dead baby that he describes in graphic detail yeah. as they're walking by. Uh -huh. uh, from the, it was what does it say? Yeah, given the toddler summer spent the sun and rain and he had given the toddler a look of ancient wisdom and mystery like a child mummy discovered in an Incan pyramid. He supposed from the, Jake supposed from the faded blue outfit it was wearing. It had been a boy, but it was impossible to tell for sure. Eyeless, lipless, its skin faded to dusky gray. It made a joke of gender. <laughs> Must have fit the last line of my favorite. Why did the dead baby cross the road? Because it was stapled to the superfood. Like, <laughs> that's the kind of shit that he just randomly throws out there. That it's, it's, you know, I don't know how to say it. it makes it relatable. It cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> like, just the kind of, I, I imagine, like, if we were that we've done it like Amber we were sitting there just talking about it that's the kind of shit we would say oh yeah um did I crack it up so we're um I guess we're in this we're back to the city or at least I got back to the city but I I'm afraid to say too much about the thinny just because the thinny's in wizard and glass again which is why we're doing the thinny now because it's making Roland remember his Memories. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to. It, it's <laughs> what I, Amber, I guess what we know of the Thinny is a lot more than what is known of the Thinny up to this point in the reading. So it, it's like a tread carefully kind of situation. Yeah, uh, it's definitely other than what. Yeah. Just based on what I remembered happening, it shocked me when that happened so I'm like okay here we go me, me too I'm like why would Roland even entertain that <laughs> shouldn't he be like get stop full stop nobody Don't moves touch. yeah <laughs> um, Topeka Zoo I have to is there a Beryl Evans in the Topeka Zoo somewhere <laughs> who's um Lord Perth Oh, is that in a, I have my concordance. I wonder what that says. They talked, that was the thing that, uh... Well, that's the thing he says to the TikTok man, and he's like, you ever say that again, I'll cut you right here. And then he says it again to Roland. Well, Roland starts it, and Jake finishes it, and Roland's like, oh, hey, you know that too? 
They mentioned- Roland says, so fell Lord Perth, and Jake answers, and the countryside did shake with thunder, and Roland looks down at him with surprise. It has been mentioned before. I just can't remember what the context was. They they brought it up before they met, like the TikTok man and stuff. Yeah, I say briefly. Like it's almost a, like a mythological story or something. I think the midworld folklore. Everything I look up is see this and see that. No, oh, I'm glad you just said that because now I know. <laughs> yeah, well, go find it. Where's midworld folklore? I have no idea. Midworld places. Midworld dialects, so maybe it's after that. A brief history of Midworld, okay, no. Oh my god, we got like 337 BC in Midworld. Uh, did you find it? No. You're looking corny. This thing is so big. She needs an index. Um, I don't know where it told me. I didn't remember what it told me to see. What was it? Midworld. I forgot. Midworld F something. Because I was on D. Folklore. Anyway. Folklore. Oh, that, folklore. Yeah, that's what it was. So I'm in characters. So, okay, let's get past characters. Midworld places. Okay. That's where you were. I didn't see it. Yeah. Okay, what's after places? Hold on. Places is a big one. Our world places. Okay. No. Cats pharmacy and soda fountain. Yeah. I don't know why I'm looking for that. So it's great. It's taking too long. Uh, yeah, we're over an hour now. So it's probably yeah. time to wrap it up. Um, <clears throat> I'm stuck in the middle of the stand. So all the stand stuff was in the Station or where they where did they see the Crimson King? It's spray Oh, the next rest of... area. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Now you can show Allie your shirt. <laughs> All hail the Crimson King. Yeah, with the eye. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh I, when I got uh, that, I, I don't remember how long I got that. I think I knew of that from Insomnia. You might have. I got that when we were doing our first tour, I think. Yeah, I hadn't read The Tower yet at that point. Oh, I think you were reading it. I'm not sure. Seems like I probably shouldn't have bought that if you hadn't read it yet. But. Well, I knew... Who, I, I mean, again, I'd read Insomnia. <laughs> yeah. <Whatever. laughs> Eddie uh, actually has a stone circle, demon circle uh, says <clears throat> sick as he felt, he could hardly take his eyes from the thinny as if unreality had been given what, a face? No. Uh, the vast and humming, humming silver shimmer ahead of them had no face it was the very antithesis of a face in fact, but it had a body a presence, and he's like yes, that was the best, it had a presence as a demon, <laughs> which had come to the circle of stones while they were trying to draw Jake, had a presence and that's it, then he moves on to rolling <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let's think about that a little more. <laughs> if the demon had a presence, uh, that's not... Yeah, well, it might not be something I'd want to remember. I might gloss over that real quick, too. Again, I don't know if he even knows what happened. Like, I don't know if he, like... like I don't. Think yeah, right. So. It almost seems like he doesn't. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, when, like, she was, like, wrestling with him. Yeah. <laughs> You got him. <laughs> yeah, when they were playing tag <laughs> in the circle, and then she kind of turns into Detta for. Her. She keeps like having her like inner Detta come out, which is, I think, something we've talked about. Like, whenever she has to do something hard, she becomes Detta. Like I don't understand why she has to do that. Why can't she just be Susanna and do the difficult thing? It's it, yeah, it's weird. She can't be a dynamic person. She has to always be multiple personalities. <laughs> yeah, I mean, shouldn't they have given someone else the wheelchair? And she really got fucked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, guys are always rolling his shoulders. 
So Jake was comforted to see Old Star and Old Mother. Yeah. Eddie was like, you know, I think I'm uh, all in. Because he was kind of, he hasn't worded the same, but he was kind of comforted too. As a matter of fact, I think Eddie has the thought where he's like, you know, I wouldn't go back if the door was there right now. <laughs> I'm like, wow. So you really can't come, you can't really go fuck you and fuck your tower if you're saying you're not going to go back. Uh, <laughs> I like how Jake asked Roland if it's a Western, and Roland looked at him puzzled. I don't take your meaning, Jake. It is to the West. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like, well, yeah, your life is a Western, so I guess you don't really understand what that means. <laughs> um, there's a bear reference there at the end. I like that. I was like, that's like our first bear song. Yeah, I've never heard of, a lot of turtle songs. I haven't had a bear song. It's, uh, where was that written? On a sign, I think. Dusty pink letters. Sex Pistols reunion tour is definitely not going to happen because, you know, some of them are dead. <laughs> oh, hell, the Crimson King again. So we got two in a couple pages. I feel like that might be come to get important. What is it Eddie's that? dream? Or I think uh, where Roland becomes Engineer Bob? Yeah. Yeah, and he's so disturbed by that. He like wakes up and says, "Hey, uh, you wouldn't betray us, would you?" And you know, therapist Roland would, won't just say, "Of course not." Right? He says, "We can never know if one can never know if they'll betray someone." I'm like, "That's bullshit." Of course they can know that. <laughs> I know, <laughs> and he's even like, "Well, you know, I've done it before, so like, you know, I'm not sure what you're looking for here." It sounds like he's telling Eddie not to trust him, and Eddie's like, "No, I do trust you." I'm like, "Oh my god." <laughs> Yeah, he's like, no man can say that for sure. And have I already played the betrayer more than once? So chances are, if I was a betting mm, man, <laughs> to my shame. But you know, and then you know, followed up by, and you'd never betray your quest. Renounce the tower? No. So I will. <laughs> the, the answer is, don't get in the way of the tower, and you'll be fine. <laughs> you know, other other than that, I, all bets are off. Really? Um. So. I'm not sure that's the, you know, you can't just say, of course not. Now go back to bed. I also, um, like, why is he, it's a dream. I understand that there is some importance to your psychological, like your health, but like, it's not like it's guaranteed it's going to happen. <laughs> Roland seems to place a lot of importance in dreams. He really wants to dissect them when he hears about everybody I mean, dreaming. Th well, that's because like, basically what Roland says is that your dreams, well, it's kind of what I'm saying, too. They either mean nothing or they mean something. And if they mean something, that means someone put it there. And it's not always good people. <laughs> yeah. And Eddie says, he tries to throw it back at him. It's kind of funny. He's like, there are other worlds than these, Eddie said, remember? And Roland's like, yeah, but some things only exist in one world. I'm like, ooh, that, that throws a wrench into the whole thing. Yeah, that's... So he's, talking, he's talking about the rose, I guess. I thought the rose kind of existed in all worlds, but I see what he's saying. It's one like, of those so, things that I'm just kind of going to let go, but it is like, oh, well, that's convenient. <laughs> well, I hate the rose because the very idea that that is controlling existence sitting in a vacant lot in the corner of in, 2nd in and 46th Street, so vulnerable. World, you couldn't have picked a worse world for that. <laughs> right? Couldn't you get one that has, like, I don't know, maybe no life on it except for the rose? <laughs> <laughs> no I'm humans. Sure yeah, right? Uh... So the fact that it exists only in one world is even more terrifying. Oh, my God. <laughs> All it takes is one guy in a construction boot to, like, go over there and take a piss one day. And that's the end of that. <laughs> um, although it does have some self-protections built in, as we saw before. I don't know if there was a... I don't know what happened to Jacob's protection or an invitation. I'm not sure what that was. What do you mean? When he tried to touch it, then, yeah. then he, like... Then it was like angels singing in his head, and then he like lost like three hours, and he woke up. <laughs> so I don't know if that was like welcome, Jake, uh, or fuck off, Jake. Yeah. Stop being so nosy. Um. Well, it may have been both. It may have been like, hey, you need to know about me. I'm important, but don't touch me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that is what it was. 
And then, um, <laughs> so it ends with Roland beginning his story, basically, right? Yeah. His yeah. dad coming in. I really like that transition that Susanna does from storytelling into now we're transported back in time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Roland's telling the story or it begins the story. And how about his dad is mad because he thought he was going to get sent west. He comes barging in going, I was sure you lost. Like he's, he's so mad at what didn't happen. He doesn't know how to calm himself down. Oh, he didn't know that he won? When he got... Uh, I'm not I just sure. I thought he was pissed off at him for even taking the chance, regardless of if he won or not. <laughs> I thought that, I, too. Well, it says... Hold on. You forgot in the face of your father. That's not true. And I thought he said that because he was just angry and he didn't mean it. I thought he had said... There's, that a, there's a part where he says... Um, he was like, you're not ready, like, basically saying you shouldn't have pushed to take it this early because you're not ready, despite you, well, so maybe he didn't know that he won. Yeah, the way you're saying it does make it sound like he didn't know. Well, I, I think he knew by the time he got to Roland, but I think when he first heard of it, his point was he was sure that that was oh. the end of that. He said, it's only by the grace of gods and the working of Ka that you have not been sent west. One more gunslinger out of Martin's Road. So he's just, he's like, okay, you got lucky. I was like, I don't think, it, I don't think he got lucky. I got to tell you, that was a, yes, it may have been an emotional reaction, but that, that, I feel like that was a plan that he had had in his back pocket, just he's hadn't used it yet. He says, you have forgotten the face of your father after he tells him he won. I feel like he did, I mean, I guess you said that already. He did know by the time he got there, but it didn't matter. He's just angry. Yeah, he was so mad at what almost happened, he couldn't contain himself. Yeah. Um, First, he, was, he didn't think that he was doing it to prove himself. He was doing it to be the youngest and to because of his arrogance. Right. He's doing it because, yeah, because of his mom. Because he found yeah. out they were fucking. And, and his dad's like, I've known for two years. Like, wait, what? You're just letting it happen. Why? I mean, I would think I don't. I don't even necessarily know or remember if we find out the answer. But like, you should just trust your dad then. <laughs> yeah. Well, fifteen, fourteen-year-olds aren't known to be emotionally stable and make good decisions. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh. But I mean, yeah. Be, I don't know. Do we ever find out why what dad's remember. story was? Was it just... I don't think so. Like, knowing your enemy is better than not knowing kind of thing? Uh, I'm not sure. I could just... I don't know. Unless Martin or whoever was also tricking him somehow. But I guess not, because he knew. So, never mind. Well, clearly it ended bad, because... Farson kind of takes over, and then I think the world moves on is the way that goes. But they don't, yeah, I don't know what the timeline is. So, whatever his plan was didn't work because here we are, and Martin's still a thing, and he's not. Um, but yeah, that was he was like, I've known for two years, you idiot. I got this. Uh, to his larger point, now that he's like let himself get baited into Martin's trap, now his life's in danger. I don't really understand why, because well, Martin's going to come after him. Right. Like, Martin clearly thought he would die or be excommunicated, exiled, whatever. So the fact that he's not oh. makes him an even bigger target. Right. So he's still there. So now he's got to deal with him more directly and then try to just get him out of his hair. Right. Which is why his dad goes, okay, I'm sending you away before he does something. Exactly, yeah. And, uh, Roland, Cuthbert, and Elaine. Wait, do we know that? He says take your friends. I don't think he mentions them. Yeah, no. I mean, we will find out very soon, like, the next page. 
well, not quite, but the next page is Rhea, so you have to get Rhea, and then oh. Roland comes up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's getting good. It's getting strange. Rhea's interesting. I'm the excited. Cat. I love this story. I mean, it's not a happy story, but I still love it. <laughs> I, uh, I think part of the problem is there's like, I don't know that I should say too much. At the first, I don't like the strife that develops between uh, Cuthbert and Roland, but it, it it makes me uncomfortable like reading it. I don't didn't like it, but now I'm kind of used to it. But it's kind of what has to happen. Yeah, and I know that, but I it's it's almost like because you hear so much about him, so there's not much where you actually see him in action and. The, the one time you do, it's not the greatest situation <laughs> for him <laughs> or for any of them. Um, for anyone. So it's like I wish I had. I wish I had some, you know, uh, parts where like they were fighting together instead of kind of arguing with each other the whole time. So it, that's all I'll say about that. So. I agree, but at the same token, like the, this is the reason why I love this book so much is because you finally get to see Roland like as a human and not just like five hundred year old post traumatic stress disorder right. traveler like right. who doesn't the, have a the guy on the front of every Western novel that Stephen right. King ever read. Like you get to see him be a kid and get in trouble and make jokes and fall in love and all this stuff, and it's like this is the same guy. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of hard to picture rolling with a girlfriend right now. Right? <laughs> All right. I think uh reach the end. Blaine is a pain, and that is the <laughs> truth. That was the end of Blaine, and that is the truth. Yep. Um, on to bigger villains. Not better, but... <laughs> on to the weirdness. Because that hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Two weeks. All right. Everybody good? Yeah. Yep. And of the podcast. End of episode 50. Wow. We mm-hmm. forgot to mention that. <laughs> Everybody say bye. Bye. Bye.